All right, welcome back, Crime Fighters, for another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, the program where you get to help make Calhoun County a better and safer place by helping us lock up the bad guys. I'm Chris Wright, along with Calhoun County Sheriff Matthew Wade, and <laughs> our viewers have really knocked it out of the park this week. Man, they have. I tell you what, I want to throw the challenge down to them. If we can do this next week, I'd be really excited about <laughs> yeah. it. So. Yeah. Look four, at the number. 14. That's not four. That's one four. 14 people arrested last week all because somebody was willing to help us out. This is definitely a teamwork. We can't do it without you. And I'm not sure, Chris, we've ever had 14 before, but. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we've had 14. I'm not sure if we've ever had more than that, but I remember several, it's been a while. It's been several years. We've been doing this show for over 16 years Well, we've got now. the best viewers right now. So we these do. viewers are really working hard and we appreciate that. Yeah. While we're talking about that, you know, we're getting some really good information from our viewers on this TV show. And there's been a little bit of talk recently about another TV show that involves a different sheriff's office and, and, and people have asked your opinion on that and, and there's a difference between what we're doing here and what's on that other show. Absolutely, you know, every, I've had numerous people ask me about the TV show 60 Days In and what I think about it and it's a TV show, it's entertainment. Um, their goal is to make money and have ratings and uh, I'm not saying that they don't do a little bit of good for somebody, I'm not doubting that, but uh, they're there to create drama, they're there to keep the viewers interest and out of that they sell ratings and get money. I'm just not interested in that. Uh, you know, people that work for me and the didn't sign up to be on TV, they didn't sign up to be criticized by millions of viewers. Also, the people we serve uh, in our jail are at their lowest level in their life possibly. Mm -hmm. They're in despair, they're embarrassed, they're shamed, they're not entertainment. They're human beings and we're going to do right by them. Uh, if somebody has any questions about what goes on the Calhoun County Jail, I'll take anybody that wants to on a tour. Come see me. We'll mm -hmm. take you down there. We don't have to have an appointment. We'll just let you go back there with a corrections officer and see what it's like. Uh, we got nothing to hide and when something bad happens in the jail, we report it. Uh, we've arrested several corrections officers since I've been sheriff and I, I don't put up with uh, nonsense. Now, it's a jail. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bad decision makers in there. So anytime you have a jail, you're going to have issues because you've got human beings that don't make good decisions. Uh, but when we have that happen, we'll hit it on. We'll mm -hmm. hit that head on, deal with it, let you know about it, and move forward. So. And so that that's all the rationale of, of why you're not interested in that kind of a TV show. But it's it's not a judgment on anybody else that's no, made no, a different decision. No, no, no. If somebody wants to do it, that's a decision on them. That's just my personal decision. Uh, that's how I feel about it. But that doesn't mean that they're wrong for doing it. Um, you know, hopefully some good could come out of it to help them. Mm -hmm. um, it's just something that I, I just choose not to do. So. Yeah. We've been doing this TV show for uh, more than a decade and a half, and it is a show that uh, we, we work together with the local community. It's not, it's not a show for the rest of the country. It's a show for Calhoun County Absolutely. to try to make Calhoun County better, share some information that the viewers can use and get back some information from them that we can use. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we'll be asking for some more of that information here in just a few minutes. When we come back, we'll have the first half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Hi, I'm Nancy Hilton with the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office. Last week, I received a text on my phone offering to wrap my car. The message gave me all the upsides to wrapping my car, like the offset of expensive cost of gas, maintenance, insurance, and even parking. They were going to pay me $250 to $350 a week for me to just drive my car. It would be a traveling billboard. I didn't bite on it and neither should you. It's a scam. It involves fake checks sent to you and then you're returning some of the money for additional expenses with a specialist for your car wrap. The specialist is a scammer and you will never receive a wrap. By the time the bank proves that your check deposit is fake, you will be out the money from the check and then you will still owe that money back to the bank. Remember, if it's easy, and too good to be true, it's a scam. All right, here we go with this week's lineup of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Starting this week with Michael Reinhardt of Piedmont, wanted on a probation violation for possession of a controlled substance. Trinia Gray of Aniston is wanted on a failure to appear warrant for domestic violence, third degree. Daphne Fuster of Aniston, wanted on a failure to appear warrant for use in possession of drug paraphernalia. 
Angel Fortenberry of Piedmont wanted on a failure to appear warrant for possession of a controlled substance, possession of marijuana first degree, and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. Dennis Williams of Oxford is wanted on a failure to appear warrant for two counts of assault second degree. And Brandy Hollis of East Aboga is wanted on a failure to appear warrant for first degree robbery. That's just the first half of this week's lineup. More coming up in just a few minutes. If you have information about any of these individuals, please call Calhoun County Crime Stoppers at 256-238-1414. All right, we are back. We'll have the second half of this week's lineup coming up in uh, just a few minutes, Sheriff. But, uh, one of the, the main things that, that concerns you as Sheriff and, and being in charge of the jail and all that is, is making sure that you don't have repeat customers too much, right? You know, our goal would be to get out of the jail business altogether. You know, mm -hmm. being sheriff would be better if I didn't have a jail. So yeah. our main goal is to make good citizens. Mm -hmm. Tamar Towns is the project manager for the Dannon Project. Welcome, Tamar. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you being on the show. And, and you are playing a big role in trying to accomplish this, right? Yes, sir. Huge role. All right. so the Dannon Project, if I understand correctly, you're working with people who are largely coming out of jail and trying to make sure that they have every opportunity to succeed in the community after they start their new life. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So basically when they come to us, um, of course, we don't accept anyone who has a sex offense, but any um, young adult between the ages of 18 and 24 who is currently involved or have been involved in the juvenile or the adult um, justice system, and we provide them with career readiness classes such as financial literacy to help them manage their, their funds or better manage their funds um, once they are um, gainfully employed. We also help them with life skills. A lot of them don't even know that you really have to kind of get up at a certain time to be at work um, on time, which is really 15 minutes beforehand. Um, and we also provide them with restorative justice where they're learning about um, understanding restorative justice, the motives behind their crime, and also how, who, 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 who may be affected, the victims and, and the community as well. I would imagine that, that someone who spends 24 hours a day for whatever period in a jail, if that's what you're doing all day every day for a significant period of time, in your mind, that becomes who you are. Yes. It's learned and, behavior. And when somebody comes back out into regular society, they don't need to have a mindset of, this is who I am, I am a convict, I am a criminal. They need to redefine themselves in their own mind, don't they? They really do. And we're there to try to help them find hope find purpose. So we're actually kind of like a family to them um, mm -hmm. and being that support that they didn't have prior to going in or maybe while they were in there, the support that they didn't get. So yes, when they get out, we're there to try to help them see life a little bit better. And you're actually with them before they get out even, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, what, yes. About six months before they're released, you, you start working with some of them that early? Some, yes, mm -hmm. and then there are some that, of course, we can't work with them until it's, it's closer time for them to get out, maybe about three to two weeks. All right, let's talk <laughs> to the, the community at large that maybe is not involved in the, the penal system at all and, and doesn't have a loved one in there, but maybe they run a business or are somehow involved in the community and We've got a lot of resources here that end up getting overlooked to the detriment of the community and these individuals, don't we? Yes, sir, we do. And it's because either they don't want to know about the resources out there or the um, agency or the um, organiza organization is just not getting out there. Their face is not out there enough. Yeah, but a, lot of, a lot of employers and such could really benefit. I know people are having a hard time finding employees. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a it's struggle with the jail. Us. Yes, absolutely. It's a struggle <laughs> everywhere, but with the Danon Project, do you help at all in, in getting these individuals ready to, to be in that workforce and connecting at all? Yes, we do. It's a training to work program. So while they're there, they go through a lot of um, workforce training and then also certifications um, and once they've gone through the training they actually receive a certification and we have a job placement specialist that assists them with um, placement. What are some of the concerns that the employers have and how are you able to deal with those? 
some of the concerns are basically getting to work on time. So we actually have like mentoring classes and different employers coming in, talking to them in reference to how, letting them know how important it is for them to make sure that they are on time. Mm -hmm. Right. And just because somebody's made a bad decision in the past doesn't mean that they can't be a, a great employee in right, the future. Right, exactly, because their decision does not define them. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes all you need is somebody to give you a little grace and a second chance. That's it, yes sir. Mm -hmm. now, Sheriff, I know you're, you're very glad to have people like Tamar that are, that are working with these individuals. Absolutely, you know, and I'm sure there's lots of businesses that are glad to have her as well. Um, you know, we have a good economy right now. You think, well that's great, but it's really hard on businesses to hire people when there's a good economy because anybody that wants a job's got one and if somebody's paying a couple of cents more down the street those people will go and do that so uh, right now it's a, an em employees market as far as there's plenty of jobs they can be picky about it uh, but so it's hard for employers to find those good employees and, mm -hmm. um, and just because you've been in jail don't mean you can't turn your life around I mean that's what we're hoping for in society, that's what we should be hoping for mm -hmm. is that somebody who has committed a crime or wasn't a productive citizen to turn their life around and become that productive citizen so mm -hmm. we don't have to take yeah. care of them anymore. So we're, that's our goal. Mm -hmm. yes. And you're working mainly with, with the younger offenders, right? So, you know, not that someone further advanced in life like myself couldn't possibly turn their life around. There's still hope for me, I think. Um, but uh, especially when they're young. We got that opportunity to say, you know what, you made a mistake, right. but your life is not written yet. Exactly. So yes, the 18 to 24, it is a hard group to work with, but it's nothing that we have not been designed to do. Um, so we're there and whatever, whatever measures we have to take, we will to make sure that they are job ready to get out there and be better, um, better citizens, mm -hmm. law abiding citizens. And we deal with the same age group especially working in our jail. 18 to 24 is probably 95 percent of the people that work in our jail and we deal with the same type of issues as almost being like a parent, you know, working yes. with those type of manage your money, come to work on time, work hard, 15 minutes early. Those, those are not just uh, things that need to be learned by people that's made a mistake. That's something that a lot of young people struggle with. That's true. All right, we need to take a quick break, but we want to find out some more about the Danden Project. We will be back in just a few moments and we'll have the second half of this week's lineup as well on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Here we go with the second half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Brittany Robertson of Aniston is wanted on bond revocation for possession of a controlled substance. Carrie Seward of Lincoln wanted on a failure to appear warrant for possession of a controlled substance and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. Quinn Brown of Weaver wanted on a probation violation for possession of a controlled substance. Jennifer Thomas of New Brockton wanted on a failure to appear warrant for third degree burglary. Freddie Combs of Munford wanted on a failure to appear warrant for possession of a controlled substance and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. John Bennett of Selma wanted for distribution of a controlled substance. Jonathan Griffith of Pell City is wanted on a failure to appear warrant for attempting to elude. If you have any information about anyone in this video, this lineup, please contact Calhoun County Crime Stoppers at 256-238-1414. We want your information, not your name, and you could get a cash reward of up to $1,000. All right, we will have some property crimes that we need your help with here in just a few minutes, but uh, we're going to talk about the Danon Project right now. And Sheriff, I think we know the guy that got this whole thing started, don't we? I think a lot of people know the guy who got it started. Tamar Towns is the, the project director or project manager for the Danon Project. Tell us a little bit about the origins. Okay, so J.J. Pruitt and his wife, Carrie Pruitt, um, decided that they wanted to start a, pro a program that would help individuals um, get better in life were from the choices that they've made. Back in 1997, uh, JJ's youngest brother was killed by an individual who had been recently released from prison from serving a nonviolent crime. And they felt like if he had had some type of guidance or direction and, and support, that he never would have gone back to doing the things that he did. See, I, I love that attitude, the way that obviously it's a tragic story. It is. But the Dana Project, it's all about the choices that you make in life and wh which direction you decide to go in there and they could have made a decision to be very much angry yes. at someone making bad decisions 
Instead, they made a choice to try to offer more offer opportunities. Yes, they actually wanted life to continue on. They wanted Dannon's life to continue on because that's the type of person that he was. He was a very lively, um, bubbly young man and they really want that life to continue on through others. So if we can provide those services to people to help them from recidivating, then that's exactly what we're wanting to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Dannon Project is not something that you're forced into. This is something uh, you voluntarily you make a choice it. to be a part of it. Yes. And somebody says, you know, that could be right for me or that could be right for somebody I know. What's the next step? The next step is for them to contact me, myself, um, Tamar Towns um, at 205, and it's, it's going to be a Birmingham number, <laughs> but they're directed to us, 205-202-4072, extension 1023. We're located um, in the old C.E. Hanna School Building in Hobson City, and their address is 715 Martin Luther King Drive, Aniston, Alabama 36201. Yeah, we, we probably don't want to throw any names out there, but I'm sure you've seen some individuals where this project has made a real difference. Yes, we've actually made an impact in a lot of individuals' lives. Now, there are some we have not been able to, to reach, but you can't reach them all. Mm -hmm. But some of them, do you want to tell us, have you got any stories of, of somebody that you see that's, that's just really making a, a positive life for themselves now? Yes, we actually, I could talk about maybe two. I know that we have two individuals who came in needing their GED, who came in, had no job skills, um, and actually kind of like one of them was kind of very disrespectful. And once they got into the program, and it's a six-week program, it took them the full six weeks to learn how not to be disrespectful, actually to learn how to love themselves, because I believe when they came in, they just did not know how to love themselves. But actually coming through and getting all the services that we provided to them and um, being genuine with them, because they could see through you. If you're not genuine, they That's can see that. That's absolutely correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So after we expressed that, um, we helped them obtain their GED. Then they got a great job um, making probably about, I think it was like $15 an hour starting out. And I was mm -hmm. like, gosh, that's great. Went to their GED graduation and that in itself meant a lot for them because they were like, um, you were here through the process, but to be here at the end where I really have never graduated before and never really had the support, it was great to be there to help them through that. But yes, we had two, two that come through that needed their GED and it was just, it felt so great to be there for them. Mm -hmm. and, and as the years go by, we're going to have more and more success stories, and, and we may not always hear those. Hopefully, that chapter of their lives will just kind of be not completely forgotten, but kind of put away to where it's not what people think about when they see this person right. anymore. Absolutely. Right. And, and we, we see a completely different side of them, and they see a completely different side of themselves and see themselves living a different life because what you see for yourself is generally what's going to happen isn't it yes it is they actually have to do vision boards they have to do where they where they've been in the past and where they see themselves going and a lot mm -hmm. of them very positive you should see them they're beautiful and you can really feel the connection that this is what they want to do and they believe that they will well, we believe in you and we appreciate what you're doing absolutely thank you i appreciate the both of you thank you tomorrow all right, we will be back in just a few moments. We'll have uh, some property crimes that we need your help with, and we'll have our crazy criminal of the week on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Uh, let's see if you can help us out with some recent property crimes in the area. Between January 5th and 17th, a black and wood home brand 5 by 10 foot utility trailer was stolen from an area near mile marker 186 on Interstate 20. Between January 17th and 18th, a Versa 380 caliber pistol was stolen from a vehicle parked on Angel Drive in Jacksonville. On January 23rd, a local resident received a package in the mail that contained a pair of high-end shoes that he did not order. He checked his credit report and found accounts had been opened in his name, which he did not know about. Between January 13th and January 24th, wheels and tires were removed from a Chevy Blazer located on New Liberty Road in Wellington. On January 25th, a tail light was stolen from a Jeep Wrangler located on Red Road 55 in Anniston. If you have information about any of these crimes or any other crimes, please contact Calhoun County Crime Stoppers at 256-238-1414. We want your information, not your name, and you could get a cash reward of up to $1,000. Stupid! Y'all so stupid!
Uh, Sheriff, I imagine that uh, just about everybody in law enforcement has seen the TV show Breaking Bad, right? Yeah, it's a pretty good show. It's probably a, a favorite with law enforcement officers. So uh, if, you, if you meet somebody named Walter White, you're probably thinking, mm-hmm, right? It would, it would key up a little bit. <laughs> like, is there yeah. a line to me so, or not? So if your name is Walter White, you probably ought to keep it straight. Yeah. You think, well, you think. this individual from Florida <laughs> who got, on the one side, you got Walter White from the TV show, and the other Walter White has just been arrested again for methamphetamine charges. He kind of looks like Jesse, the, the younger one, kind of looks like Jesse from the TV show, actually. So Yeah, so. yeah Walter White, I hope, uh, what's, his, what's his AKA, Heisenberg? Or yeah. Heisenberg? I don't know. I didn't get far that, that far. I watched uh, the first season, and then I... It depressed me, depressed and I, I, I didn't like watching it. It was depressing to me, but yeah, if your name is the same as a criminal, that doesn't mean you have to do what they did. No, that's right. You don't have to model what those people do. So, <laughs> Walter, straighten up, buddy. Uh, that's all the time we've got for you this week. We'll be looking for you and Walter White again next week on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.